So this is our first introduction video to connective tissue. So remember the four tissue types of the body. There's epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue, and muscular tissue. So in this video, we're going to introduce connective tissue and talk about its role and talk about what are the characteristics of connective tissue and how do they differ between various subtypes of connective tissue. So first thing is this, what is the role of connective tissue? Well, connective tissue is the most abundant tissue in the body and also the most widely distributed tissue in the body. It plays a number of different roles, one of which is to protect the body, another of which is to support the body, and another of which is to help bind the body together, specifically organs. When we look at connective tissue, while they play these roles of protection, support and binding, it's not limited to these roles because sometimes connective tissue can play a role in transport and also play a role in immunity as well. And as we go through the various videos, we'll speak more specifically to these particular functions. But before we do that, let's talk about the general characteristics of connective tissue. So there's three particular things that all different types of connective tissue have in common. Okay? One of these things is cells. Now, all connective tissues have a particular cell type or a number of cell types present within it that comprise it. For example, the most common cell types for connective tissue include fibroblasts, adipocytes, chondrocytes, and osteocytes. But again, this isn't all. These aren't all the cell types associated with connective tissue. You can also have leukocytes as well. Now, what you're going to find as we start to go through the different types of connective tissue, some are going to be more predominant fibroblasts. So for example, connective tissue proper, that's its name. They are more predominantly made comprised of fibroblast cells. Adipocytes, well this is adipose tissue, which is part of connective tissue. Chondrocytes are cartilage cells. Osteocytes are bone cells. And leukocytes are white blood cells, which shows you how diverse the cellular population is for connective tissue. The other thing that connective tissue have in common are fibers. Now, Connective tissue, I told you it's the most abundant and widely distributed tissue type within the body. The majority of it is the extracellular matrix. Now, what am I referring to there? Well, when we talk about certain organs and tissues and so forth, we really focus on the cells. When we talk about uh, muscular tissue, having all these muscle cells linked in together, very tightly packed and working together to form a particular tissue or function. But the tissue of connective tissue the cells are actually quite widely dispersed and it's not uncommon to have a single cell sitting within all this what we call extracellular fluid. So you'll find or extracellular matrix. So you find that one of the most important things for you to understand for connective tissue is the extracellular matrix that surrounds the cells. And often this extracellular matrix dictates whether the tissue, the specific type of connective tissue is hard or soft or fluid, for example. So examples of hard connective tissue are bone and cartilage. Examples of fluid connective tissue is blood and lymph. And examples of soft connective tissue are connective tissue loose and connective tissue dense, for example. And we'll talk about those in the next couple of videos. But let's have a look at fibers. Now, because I told you this, you've got this extracellular matrix surrounding the cells, if I were to draw up a cell right now, so I could choose any one of these. Let's just say I were to draw up a fibroblast cell. Okay, fibroblast cell, 
Now, it's sitting within all this extracellular fluid. One of the things that's within this extracellular fluid are certain types of fibers. And there's three types of fibers you'll find in connective tissue. These are collagen fibers. These are reticular fibers. And these are elastic fibers. Collagen fibers are the thickest and strongest fiber type. So they're like, I always like to think of them as the steel beams. They're very thick, they're very strong, but they actually are relatively flexible, but they're the strongest fiber type. Reticular fibers are made up of the same protein components as collagen, except it's a lot thinner and is actually quite branched. And again, is quite flexible. Elastic fibers is made up of elastic type of material, which allows for it to be extremely pliable and undergo great amounts of pulling and, pull, uh, and stretching and so forth. So these are the major collagen, reticular, elastic. And again, these are gonna be embedded in the fluid surrounding the cell. And so for example, if you have more collagen fibers, that extracellular matrix is gonna be stronger. If you have more reticular fibers, it's gonna be a bit softer. If you have more elastic fibers, it's gonna be far more stretchy. And we'll talk about specific connective tissue types that contain more so of one than another and so forth. The last thing that cells have in common sorry, that connective tissue have in common, is what we call the ground substance. Now, I like to think of the ground substance as a gel. The ground substance as a gel. Now, what am I referring to? Well, I said that the fibers need to be embedded in the extracellular matrix. The fluid of that extracellular matrix is the ground substance. And this is predominantly comprised of something called glycosaminoglycans. It's a big word, but basically just means sugars. Glycosaminoglycans. Glycosamino, but you can just refer to them as GAGs. And there's some common glycosaminoglycans or GAGs, including hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, and keratin sulfate. Now, what you're gonna find again is that some extracellular matrix will have more of one than another, and this also helps determine the consistency of that extracellular fluid or that extracellular matrix. So what do all connective tissue have in common? Well, there's always gonna be a cell type or a particular cell type, whether it be fibroblasts, adipocytes, chondrocytes, osteocytes, or leukocytes. Like I said, fibroblasts are for connective tissue proper. Adipocytes are for fat cell, uh, for fatty tissue. Chondrocytes are for cartilage. Osteocytes are for bone and leukocytes are for the blood and lymphatic system. That means that all of those things I just named are connective tissue. So what I want to do, lastly, is just label or name some different aspects of connective tissue and in the subsequent videos we'll talk about them more specifically. So, what I'll do is I'll get rid of the function of connective tissue to protect, support, bind, transport and immunity. And let's label some of the different types of connective tissue. So you can have what we call connective tissue proper and connective tissue proper is basically and this isn't all of it but predominantly this is fat and ligaments and tendons that's connective tissue proper you've also got cartilage which we know lines the end of our long bones. 
and also our ribs as well. It's quite flexible. We have bone, which we know provides support, like a structural framework for our body, and also is a storage site for certain uh, minerals, such as calcium phosphate, for example. Blood is another type of connective tissue. And we know blood transports various nutrients and oxygen or gases around the body, and also lymph. And we know that lymph provides an immune role, so it carries some important immune cells, and also helps to bring back some of that fluid that's lost through the cardiovascular system to replenish the volume of the cardiovascular system. So these are some different types of connective tissue which we're going to talk about in more detail in the subsequent videos. The next video we're going to focus on connective tissue proper and then we'll start to move on to cartilage, bone, blood and lymph. But what you need to keep in mind as I go through these videos are the particular cell type, fiber type and the ground substance as well. That's connective tissue.